Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for joining us out in the wood shop today. Uh, I want to do a follow-up video to one that I made a few weeks ago. This is going to be kind of a tool redemption video. Not so much a tool review, um, but I guess it could be a TRV as well. So what we're going to talk about specifically today is uh, this Stumac fret nipper. But I don't have a whole lot of time um, because we're getting ready for Texas Toast Days, which is less than a week away. And uh, Chris is on his way over, and I want to make sure that I don't have a bunch of, uh, of uh, stuff that is not going to Texas Toast Days out. And then Chris comes over and goes, hey, God damn it, I thought we were going to work on this stuff here. So uh, I want to get this video wrapped up before Chris gets over here. Um, and I, but I've been wanting to do this for a while because I think I finally figured out how to work this guy. So a few weeks ago, I made a video uh, that uh, was, was called, I'm Frustrated With My Stumac Tool. And the one that I'm talking about is this, uh, this Stumac Fret Tang Nipper. Um, now, I still have the old style that works great. I just wanted to try this new one. And uh, so I, I ordered it, and I was having a few problems. And I thought, you know, this is probably not the tool's fault so much as it's I'm trying to force it to work. Um, and after a few weeks of fiddling around with it, I think I finally figured out how to hold my mouth just right to get it to, uh, to work. So I've got the, uh, the Stumac Fret Tang Nipper, I've got a neck that needs some frets, and I have already pre-cut a bunch of um, fret wire to fit this neck. i got a hot beverage here, and I thought it would be cool to, as I'm doing, as I'm actually nipping the frets right before your eyes, I thought I would read some of the... Um, comments that y'all left on the, the previous video, and I know I've tried to answer all those, but I wanted to just, you know, talk a little bit about more, uh, more of that stuff, because uh, it bears uh, a, a revisiting, and it would be a little more fun to listen to me yammer on about that instead of just watch me cut fret ends for a while. So, let's get started. All right, before we get too much further along, I thought what I would do is show you what I ended up having to do to get these guys to work. So I've got my, uh, my fret tang nipper, and I got some fret wire. It occurred to me that what was happening was the fret was getting sucked into this, uh, this cutting head and would get, it just would get bunged up. So I'm going to see if I can get this in the, the thing. So what I've had to do is once I get the fret wire, I'm hoping this is in the camera, once I get the fret wire in there, what I end up having to do is kind of exert some pressure this direction and a little bit this direction. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so a little bit up and a little bit towards me. It's way easier to do it if I'm, if I'm actually looking at the fret wire. So you can take a big cut, you can cut the entire uh, length of the of the cutter and just kind of put a little bit of twisting action on there and voila. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on the actual neck itself. So um, let's get right to it. Uh, Don wrote in the comments that um, you want to cut the tang from the outside in. Well, that's what I'm doing. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. John wants to know what that double cutaway is behind me. I don't remember what that is. Um, let's see, you're putting the fret in on the wrong end, says George Gray. Well, George, I don't know if that is what is actually happening. Um, let's see, the fret should insert at the lowest end of the cutter. That's what I'm doing, and uh, that's what I always did, by the way. John 5, right? Uh, the original Stumac tool is actually the Klein Nibber. You know what? That's absolutely true. And um, I'm going to leave a link to an Amazon product if you want to make your own fret nibbing tool. And um, that, see what I just did there? Sometimes the, the fret end gets stuck inside the tool and you kind of got to evacuate that shit out of there. Um, but uh, yeah. So I'm going to leave a link to an Amazon page where you can um, uh, make your own one of these fret nippers. And in fact, uh, Ken over at Boudreaux Guitars has a video um, how to make your own one of these using the tool that I linked to. So that is definitely cool. 
Uh, 74 Dartman. Let's see. Been there before, you buy something that doesn't work right, did you try talking to it? <laughs> yes, and I tried cursing at it too. You son of a rah, 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 rah. I was like Yosemite Sam, I was yelling at this damn thing so much. And then I realized, um, you know, it's probably not the tool as much as it's me. Just, uh, you know, getting, getting shit wrong and thinking that it was going to be exactly like the other uh, Stumac tool. Okay. This guy said, uh, Deja Blue, the tool is not suited for the typical application, already radius frets. You have a radius fret jammed into a straight slot, thus you can't get it out. Um, that is absolutely 100% not true. Um, as you can see, the, the portion of the fret that actually goes in there is more or less, you know, it only goes in that far. I mean, how much more flat does it need to be? Um, we have discovered that uh, it actually works great to have uh, radius fret wire um, with this tool. Further, and to that end, when you're dealing with fret wire that's less than two inches, if it was straight and you jammed it in the tool, well, you'd still have to radius it. And um, that would totally suck. So, yeah. Um, we always radius our fret wire before we, before we do any sort of fret cutting or fret tang nibbling. Uh, let's see. Here's one from John. Stumac makes a lot of great tools and they make some that you don't really need. My favorite are the fret nippers, old design. They really, really are, John. You absolutely are right. Um, I wonder why they decided to improve this one to death. You know, I don't know. There's been some talk that maybe they can't get the original um, nibbler thing anymore. Um, but this one, once you figure out, guys, like how this stuff works, um, it's a great tool. Uh, okay, Eddie writes, thanks for the video. I almost bought those last night, but they look like they wouldn't do exactly what they're doing for you. They would do exactly what they're doing for you. Um, so let's see, let's see. Eddie, do not hesitate to buy these, but spend a little time learning how to use them. You know, even though a hand tool that looks like this is, um, uh, seems like there's no way to get it wrong, you, you kind of got to just get it just right. You know, and once you get your technique down, then you won't have any issues. But, um, you know, to say that, well, it has to work exactly perfectly right every time, but I'm not willing to put in any effort. And I know you didn't say that. Um, anyway. Buy the tool and uh, figure out how to use it and it won't let you down. Oh, see, look. <laughs> I say that right as I said it won't let you down and then it does me like that. And again, I think what was happening here is I wasn't holding the, uh, the tool correctly. I was really hoping this wouldn't do this on the video. I'm not going to cut it out though. Um, and I really do think, guys, that was my fault. I wasn't, I wasn't exerting pressure on the, uh, um, like I was showing you, a little bit of upward and a little bit toward me, and it works great every time. I think I was talking too much and not paying attention to what I was doing, and that is the way that it happens. Okay, Harcourt Mud. I'm frustrated too, but with the price of good quality tools, filled out a survey for them recently and told them that for a guy doing his own work. I think what this is is that Stumac is kind of an expensive place, and it is. But you know what? Without Stumac, um, kind of, kind of breaking this ground. Son of a bitch! It did it again. <laughs> um, without Stumac, kind of breaking new ground on some of this stuff, guys. It's, um, oh, this one got really kicked up. Um, you know where would we be? Um, again, I think that was probably me, just. Jaw jacking. I should probably stop talking so goddamn much. That would probably make everybody happy who tells me you talk too much. All right. I think I don't know if we answered that one. Uh, okay. Eddie writes in to the defense. If you call them, they will let you know the address, uh, and or they will tell you how to address the issue or refund your money. Questions like that. They have a second done customer service. You're absolutely right. Um, I have done a lot of um, of work with with Stu Mac, and they've always been very very cool to me. 
um, in terms of you know making stuff right. And it's usually uh, um, you know it's like well hey send it back or we'll just you know sometimes like if it's a finishing thing they'll just tell me to just keep the okay there we go there we go another thing that I think is going on here is I want to show you and I did this very specifically you see the difference between these fret ends this one is um, the cut side of this is straight and flat because the nipper came in on this direction this side here is the the cut side that is the the cut off end so you've got a flat a flat one here that always goes super easy and kind of a boogered up fret end here that sometimes jams up in the tool now you can you can absolutely eliminate that with your uh, with your cutters and you can go okay look this one end here's a good example this one end here is nice and flat because it came off of this side of the cutter this end here is not nice and flat because it came off it came off of this end of the cutter so sometimes what you can do is you can and man you can really see it see how the difference between that end and and that end so what you can do is you can kind of clean up this end here and that will make life easier again this is all you know um, you gotta kinda know how to work the tool and um, see voila okay um, let's see I'm undecided, oh, this is BB made. I'm undecided on the new nipper. My favorite is the one I bought 20 plus years ago. Well, um, taking only about a 16th of a tang at time helped for me, but generally it will either gouge the outside. Yeah, you know, I, um, I really don't like the, the notion of kind of little tiny bits of fret nibbling. Um, I want to make it be, uh, here, here's another one of those ones. That the, the fret probably I should clean these up. I really want to be able to do this process all in one fell swoop because that's what I think when you pay 50 bucks for a tool, it ought to it shouldn't be something that you have to, you know, kind of take your time with nickel steel. You know, this is this should just plow right through there. And it does. Um, and by the way, that's the this is the last fret. All done. Um, some people have also inquired where we can get something that works like this but will work on stainless steel frets I just don't know you know I don't use stainless steel frets so I don't know there uh, I haven't gotten to the questions yet I'm, I'm all out of time and I'm all out of fret wire um, someone sent me a link to a really cool fret filing tool that, uh, that they came up with and it sure does look neat um, I'm going to leave a link to that video as well. So if you guys don't want to spend bucks on the Stumac Fret Tang Nipper or you don't want to spend, uh, I think it's, it's quite a bit less to get something like this that you can modify to work for you. Um, but if you want to choose a file, that, I'm sure that would work for stainless steel frets. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to that video. Um, and yeah, so okay, so uh, remember to uh, check the links, guys, for all the stuff that I've been <laughs> yammering on about for the last however many minutes I've been trimming fret ends. So, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. Um, if you are wanting to come to Texas Toast Days, remember that is September 17th here in Denver, Colorado. And uh, we would love to have you go ahead and send me some. Uh, if, if you don't know anything about that, I'll be happy to send you information on that. Let's see. If you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Only a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you cool content like this. So, guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. The only way